Hey everyone, Levi here at Hammer Fab again. We're going to show you guys how to make some really cool parts that we're putting on our 66 GMC. Could also work on 60 to 66 C10 trucks. Since we did a custom firewall in the front there, you notice there's a couple of landing areas or dim, uh, recessed areas in the top right and left corners. Might be wondering what those are for. Well, we've decided we're going to do a roll cage in this truck and also some exterior roll bars or down bars that go from the firewall, connect from the firewall down to the front frame horns or the core support or both. And so what those are gonna allow us to do is basically scrap the old inner fenders which are ugly and in the way of all the tires and everything. It's gonna help us make a really cool look uh, on the firewall, but those bars that come forward are also gonna be a really good spot to mount some billet hinges to, and they're gonna be a good spot for us to connect our strip tabs to, which we're gonna utilize to bolt inner fenders or inner splash pans to. But the first step we have to do is we have to figure out how to connect the roll cage in such a way that it looks cool when you pop the hood. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making one of these. I, I, we're going to need two of them in the end, but I've already put one of them together and welded it. And what this is, is just a, it's just a beefy bracket looking thing that we designed here at Hammer Fab. And it just started as an idea. And we're going to make it bolt onto our firewall. And then that is going to accept a piece of roll cage tubing that comes in here. And once we get that roll bar made, then we'll take this off and weld it on the back. So. Let's show you how we do all that. I want to talk about a couple of things on these parts before we get started. One is, after we designed the part, we had them laser cut, okay? So the laser cut parts are super accurate. Once you get them all designed in SolidWorks, you can ensure that your parts are going to go back together once they're cut. So just to give you an example, this is the backing plate that's going to be on the back side of the firewall that has threaded holes in it. So obviously a laser can't cut a threaded hole, but we can cut this, the accurate size hole that we need for tapping those threads. And so we designed that hole in SolidWorks, had it cut, and when we got here, all we did was put threads in it. We did, uh, the other day I did a little video on how to power tap. So if you guys are uh, one of our Patreon followers, you guys are gonna get that exclusive uh, access to that content. So be sure and look for that video or go sign up at patreon.com slash hammerfab. Otherwise, we're going to skip to the next step um, is I've got some bolts threaded into that piece right now just to show you how nice the fit is on the other mating part. So these holes are also laser cut. Now these are a little bit bigger holes that are for the outside diameter of the bolt. See how snug? That's like a perfect fit all the way around. That's, that's hard to do if you're just drilling stuff by hand. Um, not impossible, but that sure does make it easy. And then this tube represents our roll cage bar that's gonna slip in there like that and gives it a really cool look. I mean, that's like an airtight fit almost. That's like a perfect fit. So anyways, I just wanna show you how nice that fit. That way, once we put it all on there, you know it's gonna bolt on. One of the first things we need to do when making a part like this is, first of all, you gotta have the idea. You gotta come up with something cool. Um, for me, as a kind of artistic, creative type person, I can kind of visualize what I want in my head before I actually make the part. Now, I know there's people that can't do that. There's some people that they can't visualize much of anything, which is okay. It's just there's people like that, and that's why they need people like me to help them make their dreams a reality. But anyways, what we started with was some 35 thousandths thick chipboard. See, it's rigid, but it's not so thick that you can't work with it. So basically what chipboard is, it's a patterning board or whatever. A lot of times they use it on uh, like, like cereal boxes or something like that. That's the kind of stuff we're working with here. Now, obviously I don't cut up cereal boxes anymore. I buy them in big sheets. You can get that stuff from Uline.com. Um, and I get like a whole like case of it. So that's what we started with here. You can cut it real easy with scissors. What I did was I just, came up with a shape that fit this body line in the top of the, the firewall real nice. So some of the things I'm looking for when I design something like this is I want the top, the top curve to match the same or really close to the top curve of the firewall. I want this angle to match the same angle and this angle to match the same. And then I want this to, to be flat on the bottom. Another thing I'm looking for after I get the initial shape figured out is I want uh, about equal space all the way around the bottom of it and across the top. You don't want to make things too big because 
by the time this gets body worked and painted and this gets powder coated, everything grows a little bit and things might not fit if you crowd them too much. So always make sure you give yourself enough room. Then after you get your shape finalized and what you want, I'll do a little trick here and I'll get it as close to symmetrical as I can. Um, but mainly I'm, I just want it to look the way I want it to look. And then I'll try and make it as symmetrical as possible. An easy way to make sure that your pattern or your part is gonna be symmetrical by hand is to just fold it in half. And that what that does is that creates a center line and then it'll show up if, if one side's longer than the other, then you can just trim it a little bit to make sure that they're both the same. And then unfold it, double check, make sure it still looks cool. Okay, the next step to making this pattern is we need to establish where do we want our holes to be. So you can see I've kind of got some chicken scratch on here. I've got some rough lines kind of where I want the gussets to be maybe. None of that is really set in stone yet. We're not gonna get that set in stone and completely figured out until we transfer some of these measurements into the SOLIDWORKS on the computer. But for right now, I know I need this hole about that size. I know I want four gussets, not sure exactly where they're gonna be yet. And I know I want four holes, and I'm not sure exactly where those need to be. Now some of that is gonna get figured out on the computer. Um, so what we did here, you'll see here in a little bit, but these holes or these dark spots and the gussets ended up in slightly different spots in the final product. So let's go see how to draw it in SOLIDWORKS. Now we're in here on the computer. We're gonna take the cardboard pattern and transfer some basic measurements. Now these measurements aren't real accurate, so we have the chance to make them accurate in the computer. But we're just using this to get close. So let's uh, switch over to SOLIDWORKS. That's an online uh, design software. Well, it's not online, it's on my computer. It's a computer design software where we can turn drawings into 3D parts. So here we've got the part opened up in SOLIDWORKS. Um, I've got it turned into a 3D model. Um, and you can see that it's into, this is an assembly. So this is several different pieces put together. So we've got, you know, that piece, um, that piece, that piece. You know, each one that gets highlighted is a separate piece. And then you can see there's little, on the back side, there's little slots and tabs. So uh, I've designed the parts in such a way so that when they're, after they're laser cut, they can only go together one way and you don't have to jig anything up or position anything to make sure that they're assembled correctly. They just fall into place and all you gotta do is weld it. So to give you an idea, if we select that part, we can hide it and now you can see the slot that the tab for that part plugs into. Now, if I just kind of go back to that view, you guys can kind of see the difference that we ended up with. You know, I had two holes close together. Well, they ended up out in the corners and these were out here and they ended up kind of down in these corners. And some of my reasoning behind that was you have to keep in mind the size of the fastener that you're gonna be using in here. So you wanna keep in mind proportions and you want it to look right, but you also want it to function right. And if I would've put these holes like down here, I could have done that, but then you just basically got a, a whole tail of metal up here that's not doing anything functionally. It's just kind of along for the ride. So when you put the bolts out further in the corners and gusset it, it makes a lot bigger footprint that's stronger to absorb some of the impact, you know, when, when the chassis is under stress and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I put the bolts there. And then you also see this distance uh, between the hole and this gusset is about the same as the distance between that hole and that gusset and that's to allow for a washer and the head of our bolt. All right so now we're going to design the cylinder this piece of tubing that's going to go in the center of this like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here we're going to create a new part and then we've got to select a plane and now we're going to draw a couple of circles starting in the center and another one like that. And now we're going to create, uh, actually we're going to, we're going to dimension it. So the outside dimension needs to be what? Well, we're going to measure it two inches. Exactly. To the first dimension, you have to call it either inches or whatever. Two inches 
and then after that it knows that it's in inches. Okay, now the second is the inside diameter. So we're going to make it, what? 1.630. Okay, green arrow. All right, now we're ready to turn that into a piece of tubing. So we go to features, extrude a boss base, and now we need to figure out the length. 1.5 inches. Boom, there's our piece of tubing. Okay, now we want to we want to radius the top. That's called a fillet. You have two options here: fillet or chamfer. We want fillet because that's a rounded edge. Okay, now it gives us a little preview there of what it's going to look like. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger, so I'm going to make it adjust that right here. Boom! There we go. And there it rounds off the corner. Now on the inside. I want to chamfer this one, but not as big. So we're going to go 0 0.0, 0 No, we're going to go 0 0.030. That's 30 thousandths chamfer. There we go. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, make it where there's no burr on that inside corner. It's going to make it where the tube will slide in easy, but it's also going to give somewhere for the powder coating to wrap around into that hole instead of trying to bridge over and connect to the tube. Because the, the tubing is going to get welded in here from the back. We're not going to weld it right here. So we want a nice crisp looking seam and that chamfer will help prevent the powder coating from trying to do something weird right there. So, all right, now we're going to spin the part around. We're going to do two chamfers on the back. We're going to do a big one on the outside. Well, let's do the inside one first since it's going to be little and we've already got that dimension set up. It automatically populates it right there. Boom, that one's done. Now we're going to change the outside one. So we do chamfer and now we want to change it. Let's go 0.1. It's a hundred thousandths chamfer. That's a pretty big chamfer. See that preview? That's pretty good. Now, why do we want that? We want the back of this piece of tubing to um, have a place for the weld to go. So that's basically just to fill it so that we can fill it up with a weld on the back side. Now this part, we're not getting laser cut. We're going to make this on the lathe. Well, I'm actually going to use this part. So um, it's only as nice as you can, uh, as good as you are on the lathe. You know, this started out as a piece of DOM tubing. Um, the inside diameter was a little snug, so I had to use a boring bar to smooth it, just to take a little bit more out of the inside. And then I rounded the outside off with a, a grinder while it was spinning on the lathe. Um, so had to tune it a little bit to fit, fit my situation, but it was really close. It didn't take too much work. But I started with a piece of tubing and then worked from there. If you didn't have a piece of tubing, you could start with a solid chunk of steel and carve that out. It would just take forever. Okay, now we've got our piece of DOM tubing. We're going to save it. DOM tubing for cage. Okay, what does DOM mean? DOM? No, it's not DOM. It's drawn over mandrel. That's what it stands for. When they make this type of tubing, it's made in a specific way so that the inside diameter is a specific dimension and not just a random dimension. So most tubing is measured from the outside dimension, which is exactly two inches, but the inside dimension is not usually guaranteed to be an exact dimension. It's just whatever it ends up being according to the wall thickness. With DOM tubing, on the other hand, the outside and the inside dimension are specific dimensions. Like very, very nice. So the way they do that is they draw a mandrel through the center. So when they're forming this tubing, the outside is, is probably rolled together. It probably starts as a flat sheet and they roll it together. 
and then they weld it together. Somewhere in here there's a seam. You can't see it on DOM tubing though. That's the whole point. So once they do that, they draw it over a mandrel, like a big solid chunk of something that they pull through this with a, with a, a cable or a chain or something. As the tubing's being formed, it also forms the inside of the tubing, making it perfectly smooth. So anyways, that's what DOM stands for. So we're going to hit save. Make sure it's in the correct folder. We want that in our SolidWorks folder. Save. All right, now we're going to leave this file open. We're not going to close it. We're going to go back to our assembly. And now we're going to come up here to assembly and insert components. And looky right there, our DOM tubing for cage shows up over here in the navigation bar. So we're going to click that and look at there, it just floats right in there. You, you can put it wherever you want. You know, you can rotate this, you can put it a little bit closer, whatever. We're just going to click it right there, okay? And that's, it kind of, it kind of slapped it in there, but it's, it's not in the right spot. So we got to make it in the right spot. So that's what we're going to do next. So what we're going to do is spin this around a little bit so that we can see some different parts. So now we're going to select this ring and this ring. We're going to hold down the control key so that we can highlight both of them. And now it gives me some options. So the option I'm looking for is this little paper clip and that's called a mate. Mate. So we're going to join those two pieces together by clicking this button. Okay, see how it automatically zapped them together? So now it gives me some options here. What are those? Well, those are the different types of mates. Do we want it to be a concentric mate, or a coincident mate, a tangent mate, a concentric mate? Do we want to just lock the two components together, flip the direction, or undo? Okay, so we want a concentric mate. We want those two circles to perfectly line up with one another based off of the center point. Boom, like that, okay? There's one mate. Okay, now we're going to hit the green check mark and hit this green check mark. Now we're going to do another mate. You can see it's poking through too much on the back. So we're going to do another mate, and this time we're going to click this surface, hold down the control key, and this surface, and now we're going to hit the paper clip again and hit mate. And you can see it automatically mated up those two surfaces and it's already selected, pre-selected the coincident mate, which is the one we want. And so we're going to hit the green check mark. Boom. That part is perfectly mated. It can't go any other place. It's exactly where it needs to be. And all of our other pieces line up right with it. Pretty cool, huh? So. Now, I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. Over here on the left, I've got a bunch of things highlighted in red. Those are basically errors. That's because uh, I originally deleted this part and I forgot to save it, the original one. So had I saved it originally, none of these errors would be there, but because I deleted it and added a new one, it's showing some errors. So I could go back and fix all that, but I'm not going to because I've already got my parts made and laser cut. So. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys what that part looks like all together as one uh, unit or one assembly within SolidWorks. I'm going to show you guys how to get started attaching the roll cage brackets to the firewall. Okay, so a couple of things you're going to need is a drill with an eighth inch pilot bit. You may or may not need the spring tool center punch. We're going to need a, a countersink bit to deburr it. We got a step bit for drilling the bigger hole. I got a, a hammer. 9 16 ratchet wrench and a transfer bit set. So we're going to start with this. We need a, these should be a perfectly laser cut 3 8 hole. That's the size that our bolt's going to be passing through the hole. So let me see if I got a 3 8 one on here. Let's see how good it fits. Let's see. Oh, I think I made them a little bit bigger in the computer. Yeah. Like if we were going to go check, I'm pretty sure I made them a little bit bigger. Um, let's just double check. Yeah, see, it's not that size. It's 20, uh, 25 64s. 
think, unless somebody put these in the wrong place. That could happen. Yeah, somebody put those in the wrong bin. Let me get a different one. I always have two sets of transfer bits. There, that's the 2964s. Yeah, that's what it is. Or, I'm sorry, 25. No, it's 3 8 Yeah. It's 3 8 Okay, good. So we got a 3 8 inch transfer bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this one before we weld it together. We don't want to weld all the pieces in there. We're going to use this as a pattern to transfer the holes accurately to the piece of metal. I'm going to put on some headphones for this. Need a, a hammer and a transfer bit. If you want, you can use a couple of magnets. I've got some rare earth neodymium magnets here just to kind of help hold it in place. Now, you just want to kind of step back and look at it, make sure it's right where you want it. Make sure the magnets aren't doing something weird to it like that. Anyways, that's close enough. We just want to get one hole established for right now. Now, we're going to grab our transfer bit. It's got a point on one end. And we're going to hold it right there. Grab our hammer. Make sure you're holding it nice and square and give it one swift hit. That's all we want for right now is one. We don't want to try and do all of them right now because they probably won't line up if you try and do all of them at once. Okay, now we got the one uh, punk punch right there. We're going to line that up. Now we're going to step it up with a step bit. There's three eighths. I'm going to go up one more size. Now we're going to countersink it. Now we, we won't be able to countersink the backside on this hole because we can't get to it. But I think we can get in there with a file or something and maybe even, we might be able to get in there with a little air belt sander and get the burrs off that way. In order to get, get access to the backside, we're gonna have to take the, the cow panel off. So it's only held on there with a couple of screws right now. So let's take that off. Okay, if you can't get an air tool or something in there to get those burrs off of there, Get yourself one of these uh, deburring tools. A lot of times machinists have these. You can get these at MSC, Industrial Supply, or uh, somewhere else. But anyways, you can kind of grab the back side of that hole and cut that burr off of there. It takes a little bit of elbow grease. We gotta get those burrs off of there so that our panel uh, I call it a panel so that our backing plate with the threads on it sits nice and flat on there. So I'm just going to reach in there and feel. See, there's still, I can't see it, but I can feel that there's a burr on the top. There we go. Okay, now see, I'm going to test fit this in there. See how that hole lines up real nice right there? Next, you want to grab. A 3816 bolt, which is what we're using. Uh, you want your outer plate and your inner plate. So this one already has threads in it. We're going to use that as a nut. Now this is just a temporary operation right now, okay? So we're basically going to use this as a jig so that we can finish transferring these holes. So we put that through there, like that. Line up your hole on the back plate right there. And then get this bolt started into there like that. Now we don't really care what the inside plate's doing right now. All we care is that it's in the right spot. And then we're going to swing this back up, reline it up with the top and snug it. And basically what we're doing is utilizing that bolt and washer as a clamping mechanism to hold the rest of this in place. Boom. That ain't going nowhere now. Okay. So then you get your transfer bit and your hammer again. And you can transfer these holes without worrying about it moving around on you. Now we can go ahead and drill those holes out, but first we got to take this off. This time I'm going to use a little bit of cutting fluid on the step bit. 
it tended to want to gall and, and kind of push the metal instead of cut the metal, which tells me my bit's getting dull. So a little bit of cutting fluid should solve it for a little while. Six flute countersink. A lot of pressure, low speed. Deburr the back sides. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill four holes that only act as plug weld holes. Okay, so once we get that panel bolted on there, we're gonna utilize these holes to bolt it on there and clamp it in place. But we want some other holes right here and here, basically just to weld up to hold that plate into position so that we don't have to keep fishing around in here to put a plate on the backside every time. It'll just always be on there. Those holes don't have to be in any specific spot. You just wanna make sure that they're within the confines of the bracket. And you don't want them right in the middle because that's where our roll cage tubing has to go through. It's just something that's gonna hold that plate on there. So I drilled that a little bit bigger because I'm gonna use the MIG welder to plug weld those. All right, we're gonna put some weld through primer on this backing plate that goes inside the cowl panel. This has the threaded holes in it. As you can see, we've got some bolts started in there. Now, here's a little painter's trick for you, okay? So instead of laying that piece flat on your board and painting, painting it, and then flipping it over and getting the wet paint to stick to the board. Just thread some bolts halfway through like that. And now we can set it in, on there and it's gonna raise it up off the board just enough. And we can still get underneath the, the heads of the bolt to get some paint on it. So we just wanna coat both sides of this. This is gonna be inside the truck where you're never gonna see it again. We just wanna make sure that it doesn't end up rusting on us. This is a copper rich weld through primer. It's really uh, best, this particular kind is suited for uh, TIG welding, but it'll also work for MIG welding. You just don't want to use the zinc type paint for uh, TIG welding. Okay, so now that side's done. You don't want to wait for it to dry. Just grab it by a bolt and let it drop on the heads of the bolt. You don't have to worry about messing up the paint job on the other side. Okay, we'll give that a few minutes to dry and then we'll weld it in. Okay, next we're gonna utilize this uh, pad that's gonna go on the back. We're gonna put some bolts in it just kinda like that a little bit. And we're just gonna set it back on there and we're gonna transfer this center hole right to the outside because we need to cut a hole through that so that our roll cage tubing can go all the way through. You could use a Sharpie for this if you want. I'm gonna use this little scribe. Okay, now we've got a perfect circle on there. And now I'm gonna take a circle template. This one's pretty cool. This is a metal circle template by uh, Greg Yoakum Designs. It's a buddy of mine. Uh, anyways, it's got several different sizes on here and it's got little hash marks or tick marks on four corners, which are 90 degrees apart from one another. And so we're gonna find, we just use that one as a reference scribe now we're gonna find the size that we need. So we're using inch and five eighths tubing for this roll cage. So I don't wanna be fighting a hole that's really close to what I want it to be because we're not actually gonna weld it to the body. We, we want a hole that's big enough for it to pass through without hitting anything with paint and everything on there. So instead of inch and five eighths, I'm gonna bump it up to inch and three quarters. That way um, we got plenty of room, but we're still gonna utilize this one to make sure it's centered properly. So I'm lining up that. Now I'm using a fine point Sharpie to trace the perimeter. You don't really need that perimeter, but we do need these hash marks, top and bottom, side to side. And now we'll use the edge like this to make a crosshairs. And right there is where we want to put our pilot bit. Next, we get the spring tool. These are really handy little uh, devices for 
making a nice solid punch right in the middle. Now we drill our pilot hole with the eighth inch bit. That's another reason why you wanna make sure your hole's big enough because that bit just walked on me about a sixteenth of an inch. Might not sound like much, but it probably wouldn't, it would not have fit if you would have drilled it the exact size. So next, uh, I wanna step this one, this pilot bit up to a quarter inch hole and that's it, no bigger. Because the quarter inch hole is gonna be the pilot bit size for our hole saw. So you see what I did there? I don't know if you can tell that on camera, but I kind of got it started and then I pulled this way on the bit. I was leaning this way and it recentered up that hole with our crosshairs. Now we're ready to use a hole saw to cut out our hole that allow the tubing to pass through. We're using an inch and three quarter outside diameter hole saw. We're gonna make sure it's nice and sharp. We're gonna use a little bit of cutting fluid. This is a quarter inch pilot bit. Fits right in that hole. You always want to drill the hole all the way out to quarter inch first because what happens if you don't, if you just use this bit to drill that hole, what happens is it goes through and then it catches the, the, the hole saw and it snaps your bit. So always drill that out so that this bit isn't under load. This is just a pilot bit. You really don't even need a drill bit. You could just have a piece of quarter inch bolt in there or something. bit's not as sharp as I thought it was. This has got a flapper disc on it. It's got 60 grit little pieces of sandpaper all glued together on there. We're going to use that to clearance these burrs out. Okay, now we're ready to put our pad on the inside, bolt it on there, and plug weld those holes. We've got our backer pad all painted up with some copper rich weld through primer. Let's remove these bolts. Install it from the back side. All those holes should line up. And you want those pretty tight. So now we're just gonna plug weld into those three holes grind the welds down, take this off, and now it's, it's never gonna fall off and we can go ahead and bolt our roll cage bracket on there. This is a situation where MIG welding to me makes sense, okay? MIG welding's gonna burn a, a nice hot weld down into that thick metal, okay? We wanna get a lot of heat in there and build it up. I don't want that thing coming off. Um, so it's, it's a perfect use of a MIG welder. All right. We're getting ready to MIG weld. We're gonna plug weld these three holes right here to hold our plate on there. Next thing you wanna be sure you do is some anti-spatter spray for your uh, MIG welding sparks. This nice clean bare metal's uh, gonna to tend to wanna to have MIG berries stick to it. So we don't want that. So to prevent that, use this. Okay, that's good enough. Now we can weld. All right, we got the MIG welds done. Now we're gonna grind it down um, back flat. I'm gonna use my three inch backer pad that we sell here at HammerFab. These are 3D printed. They keep your disc nice and flat. These are 50 grit twist on style uh, abrasives from Jag10 Tools. You can find them on Instagram, at Jag10. So we're gonna twist that on there. And then after that, I'm gonna switch over to one of these coarse uh, scotch Bright cookies, also from Jag10 Tools, to blend out the 50 grit scratches. Now I'm gonna use some 80 grit hook it three inch abrasive uh, for my DA sander, also from Jag 10 Tools. 
to blend out the Scotch-Brite. Now we're gonna do the final step for our metal finishing process here. This is a coarse red Scotch-Brite. We're gonna take the disc off of here, the, the abrasive disc off and just use the Velcro part. To stick it on here and we're just gonna kinda hold it as we buzz around. All right, now is the final moment we've been waiting for. We're gonna mock up the roll cage, bracket, gusset, adapter plate that we made. So I've got some bolts here. These are just hex head bolts, but they've got a real small washer on them. That's called an AN washer. So and that way it ensures that it fits our design without hitting the weld or the gussets. Now we may use hex bolts in the end with that kind of washer, or you could do something with a slimmer head like a, a socket cap screw. So, but for now, this will work just fine. Man, that looks nice. Okay, now this is just a sample piece of our roll cage tubing. It's inch and five eighths DOM tubing. Fits just like it's supposed to. All right, we've got our pieces to our puzzle here for making the firewall bracket. We've got our laser cut plate, laser cut big gussets, laser cut small gussets, and a machine piece of DOM tubing that we did on the lathe. We rounded it and uh, smoothed it out on the lathe. So the first thing we're gonna do is install this in there. I'm just gonna flip it over to make sure it's sitting nice and flat. Okay, now I'm just gonna put like three tacks on that. Now we're gonna put a bead all the way around that. For that, I'm gonna put some gloves on because that's gonna be a lot of continuous heat. Okay, now, see that little corner chopped off right there? That was deliberately done on purpose in the computer to clear that weld. So that we don't have to grind that corner off. See? Thinking ahead. Okay, now, we're gonna flip it over. And we're gonna weld that back little seam right there real quick. Okay, now we're gonna grind that weld down just so we can make sure this thing sits flat again, but first we gotta let that cool off. All right guys, I'm getting ahead of myself. I forgot one crucial step. Before we put all these gussets on here, I wanna soften these outer edges just a little bit to give it kind of a more of a cast part look instead of a laser cut part look. So I'm just gonna soften them real quick with a grinder and then we'll hit them all with a uh, Scotch-Brite belt on the Burking grinder and then, then we can put them together. Okay, now we're just gonna hit these real quick. All right, now let's go over to the Burking, Burking belt sander. We've got a scotch right belt on there to get rid of those scratches. All right, everybody, if you guys are in the market for a really good quality made belt grinder, this guy is the ticket. This is from Burr King, they're made in America, they're made in Missouri. 
Um, this thing is bulletproof, man. I got the four inch wide belt. Um, you can get these scotch Brite belts and regular uh, 80 grit abrasives. Hit these guys up. If you guys want one of these machines, we're actually a dealer for them. You can go to hammerfab.com and get one of these machines. We'll make it worth your while. We've got them priced just right. We've included shipping in the price. So easy peasy. We'll just load it up and send it your way. I want to get all the aggressive marks out of it now because once we weld it all together, it's going to be really hard to get those out. So I want to just weld it and leave it. And that way when we powder coat it, it's going to turn out really nice and those marks won't show up. Oh yeah, okay, oh yeah, okay, see? I was concerned about that, so. I'm checking for the, the flatness here. And so I was, I saw that when I welded this, it cupped it a little bit. But when I welded the back, it must've pulled it back the other direction. So what we're gonna do, we wanna make sure that this doesn't pull on us when we weld this. We wanna make sure that the back stays nice and flat. We're gonna use the bench as a jig and a heat sink but first we gotta get these guys tacked into place. Once we get them tacked, we'll move them over here to the corner where we can clamp two edges of the bench and get well, most of it welded while it's clamped down. All right, guys, we got it all tigged up. This is our second bracket for our firewall. Um, if you guys wanted, you could just buzz a weld around those little um, tabs and slots on the back. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. We've got plenty of weld on the outside. That's just more work that we'd have to do, grinding and everything, so we're gonna leave that the way it is. But uh, we got it all tigged up and we ran into one problem though, and I ran into this on the other one, so I knew this was coming. But after all this welding is done and cooled down, what happened was it sucked, it shrunk this tube diameter and made it so that our roll cage tubing no longer fits in there. See that? So you might think, well, just grind that down. Well, the piece we're gonna be making the cage out of isn't gonna be this small. It's gonna be like eight feet long. So you can't put that in the lathe, it, I guess you could maybe, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna chuck this in the lathe, believe it or not. And you're like, well, how can you do that now that it's all a weird shape? Watch and see. All right, come on over to the lathe. I'll show you guys how to fix this situation. Hang on, I gotta grab that piece of tube. All right, this is a sketchy situation here. This is, uh, this is a last resort, guys. Um, well, I didn't expect that to happen either. Okay, so first we gotta loosen that, position that, tighten the tool holder. Now we're gonna take this quick release tool off and we're gonna put the boring bar on. This is for getting down inside this hole. Tighten it. Okay, now before we turn the machine on, matter of fact, I'm gonna hit that red safety button 
so that it can't accidentally turn on on me right now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this all the way out here to the edge. And I'm going to run this bit right up to the face of my part. Just barely not touch it, okay, so I can spin it. This is going to be my my dial indicator per se, quick way of testing if this thing is square. So then I'm going to rotate it around and if it's square, it shouldn't hit. Uh oh, it hit. It's not square guys. Okay, now let's try it. Let's back it off a little bit, line up that side. Spin it again. Okay, it's still way off. Let's see here. I'm not sure if this is going to work. If I can't get that square, it's not going to work. Okay, I'm going to set it over here, right up to the face. That's better. That's close enough. If I can tighten it down right there, we should be good to go. But it might want to jump out of there. Got your helmet on? It's a good time to put a helmet on. I don't have a helmet. Okay. All right, I got it pretty tight. I don't think it's coming out of there. Okay, now I just do the old, now we got to turn it back on. Oh yeah, that's pretty square. That's square enough. Okay, now we want to run it in here. And I'm going to turn this just a little bit more like that to get a better angle on the inside. Okay, now we are I'm going to tighten it one more time just to make sure cuz if it, if it pops out from tightening it it's definitely gonna fall out. So if it doesn't pop out from tightening it, you're probably good to go. Okay. Bump the, jo bump the joggle button just to check. And then go for it. I'm gonna check my direction here. Okay, I'm going the wrong direction. So then you stop the machine. Or no, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I need to stop the machine, switch the direction. There we go. Run that in until it touches, back it out, and then give it just a little bit of a hit, and then hit the auto thing and watch out. So far, so good. All right, we're gonna turn it off and we're gonna check our tubing. Hopefully I took enough off on that first hit. I don't think I did because I can still see some blackness in there. Dang it, not quite. We gotta do another hit. We should be all right though. Famous last words. Run it in until it hits. Back it out. Give it a little hit and then stand back. It's still not enough, I can tell. So far, so good. Whoops, that was my light. Okay, let's test it. 
still got to go some more. Okay, it just barely fits in there. It's an air fit tight or airtight fit. Ugh. Um, I guess that's probably okay. What do you think? Should we risk it for some more? <laughs> I say we stop while we're ahead. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we got the second one all welded up. We spun the inside on the lathe a little bit. That was sketchy, but we made it through. And now we are ready to final install on the truck, full mock. This is the best part, mocking it up. Man, these laser cut parts fit so nice. You know, the old fashioned way that we used to do things was just get it close and then you'd have to fight it at the end and then you'd have to get it off, carbide it out a little bit or drill it out a little bigger. This is awesome, man, this is like, Game changer. Thank you for watching our latest video. If you guys would like to see more of what we have to offer here at Hammer Fab, such as our dimple dies, our bead roller dies, our assembly hammers, and everything else fabricated related, go to hammerfab.com. Thanks for watching.